Hello and welcome back to the Limit of Adhesions USF 2000 League. We're here at Long Beach. My name's Mark and joining me in the commentary booth is Steve. How are you doing, Steve? I'm great, thanks, Mark. It's uh, fantastic to be here at uh, Jason Weaver's backyard <laughs> here at Long Beach. We're looking forward it to this one. Indeed. Uh, it is indeed. And it's also Eric Pusey's uh, favourite track, would you believe? It is. We will have more to say on Eric Pusey later. We've got a nice little tribute to him. But yeah, for starters, Steve, why don't you tell me about Long Beach? What's it like as a track? Have you driven around it much? Oh yes, it's a car park, absolute car park. <laughs> to be honest, if you get a good run at Long Beach, it's a fantastic track. But if you get involved with incidents and accidents, it can be so frustrating. The walls are so close, and it's uh, it's tight and tricky. But you've got the uh, obviously you've got the passing places at the ends of the long straights. Um, but yeah, a beautiful place, and you can see the. The waterfall there and a fountain and whatever it is with the dolphins and things. Yeah, it's a great place. Great place. Nice. Always uh, fun and... Uh, oh, here we go. We got a little bit of a spinner there. Um, yeah, it's always fun and it's uh, it's it's fast and frenetic. And uh, the drivers love it here for some reason. But it can be a bit frustrating. Yeah, I think it's probably the track on iRacing that's closest to the Monaco Grand Prix. Would you agree, Steve? Yeah, I think so. there are sort of... There are walls everywhere, and you have to be right up close to them and really have a lot of confidence in yourself and the car to be able to get any sort of lap time. Yeah, definitely. As uh, James Hunt would say, it's uh, big balls time. <laughs> it is indeed. I think as we look through the championship standings, I think the one thing that jumps out at me, Steve, is the resurgence of Malara in the last couple of rounds. It looked as if Murphy had this championship all wrapped up. But Malaren sort of come out of nowhere in the past couple of rounds, and he's really closed that gap down. He has, yeah. I mean, it's been very close um, in previous seasons, and uh, and Tor seems to have had his own way in that uh, that time. However, Alex has come on really strong this season, and he's been challenging on uh, on all sorts of fronts throughout the uh, throughout the season, different championships, obviously. But he seems to really have taken to the uh, the Formula cars, and he's putting up a really strong fight. It'd be interesting to see in the next couple of races whether. So can uh, overhaul the uh, the gap that's uh, that's come up and uh, and take the championship from him. And I see there with the club fifteen hundred championship, uh, Philip Miles there running away a little bit, uh, you know, nearly what, seventy nine points in front of Rich Meesters there. So it'd be interesting to see if uh, if, if Philip uh, has a bad race, whether uh, Rich can overhaul him there. But uh, I think Philip's got a, a decent lead there. He does indeed, but he's got a lot of very angry camels <laughs> right on his heels. <laughs> Don't ever give the camel a hump. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. As you see there in the team's championships overall, anti Wizard Society well out on top. 518 points ahead of Minardi Simsport. Wizards not too far behind. No, I think it's yeah, very much an unassailable uh, lead is that in the team's championships, so... Yeah, there's there's not a great deal to uh, to race for in the championship side. And maybe uh, the, uh, the the last three last couple of three places on the uh, on the podium style for uh, championship standings. So starting from P1, although he does have a pet lane start, is Alex Murphy <clears throat> to Malarin hot on his heels. What we were saying, Steve, about the resurgence of Malarin with yet another brilliant qualifying result. He it sort of is, seemed yeah. a bit... I'm not sure what happened in the first few races of this season, but he was sort of a bit... He, he It wasn't that sure Malarin of old, sort of double world champion. Like, no, no yeah, he, I'm, certainly, he certainly sure wasn't himself, happens. really. There's, there just seemed to be something lacking in... Uh, not the commitment, but certainly the uh, maybe the interest a little bit. He's, he's obviously um, done it so many times before. Maybe there's a little bit of, uh, you know, not particularly turn up and doing it again but he needs a challenge and, and Alex has, has proved that he can be that challenge to him although you know with uh, with with uh, Alex having the pit line pit lane start my apologies um, it does give pole position then straight to tour so it'd be interesting to see if Alex can work his way um, through to the front again from starting almost at the back with a pit lane start um, mm. so it, it's whether Alex can keep himself out of trouble um, and pick up plenty of places. Indeed. So, as we see the cars on the grid, and 
come up towards that awkward, awkward hairpin where we may well see some drama. You see, oh, Malarin very, very slow through the hairpin. And the safety car will have peeled into the bits. And I see a bit of smoke in the background, but nonetheless, we are racing at Long Beach. There looks to have been some sort of carnage in the background. There's a big sort of gap in the field. I'm not sure what's happened, but... And we see Meesters with a meatball flag needing repairs already. So something would have happened into that chicane as we see the drivers successfully navigating turn one. Chris Forrester also with a meatball flag. That is Messenger through everyone making it through the fountain section so far. Nice little overtake for Pepper there. We see that was Messenger almost in the wall. I think he was in the wall actually. It looks yeah. to be okay for now. Yeah, you can clip the walls, but it's it's how hard you hit them, and depends on the the angle of the your strike as well. Sometimes you can get away with it. Oh, that's Miles off in the background. He's in the wall with a meatball. They look like a bit of a lock up there ah. as well. Indeed, and we also saw Stephen Greening there making it further in this race than he did in the prototype race earlier this season. That's always good to see. Oh yeah, always yeah. <laughs> We see Etridge right on the back of Malarin, looking to challenge for the lead. So Murphy, in all the carnage of the first lap that we saw in the background, as we see, here's a replay of what happened. That's Miles just, I think, spinning up the rears, getting the power down, and straight into the wall. And that is not a healthy looking car. Well, it's quite bent, is that? Indeed, so Murphy already up to 11th after the pit lane start. Here we see Winslade with that wonderful livery with Innis just behind. I think now's a good time to explain about the tribute liveries that we've got on, I think, pretty much every single car this week. So one of our beloved Limit of Adhesion members, Eric POC, is unfortunately having a bit of trouble with his shoulder so he's tried absolutely everything but it's not going away so he's unfortunately having to put a bit of a pause on sim racing yeah. so given that it, this is his favorite track and it's one of his favorite combinations we thought it would be very fitting to put a little tribute to him on all of the cars which is absolutely lovely to see yeah he's, uh, hopefully uh, he can uh, eric will be able to get back racing at some stage and uh, rejoin us on track um, but certainly from uh, from everybody at uh, Cool Camel Racing and the Cool Camel themselves, you know, wish uh, Eric all the best and uh, hopefully he'll be uh, back racing with us soon. Indeed. And speaking of camels, there was one in the wall. Unfortunately, a meatball flag for James Pepper needed. Here's what happened to Weaver. Oh, just got a little bit sideways and nudged the barrier. And that's another. Is that is that Steve Pepper in the wall as well, or was that James? No, I think that was Steve Pepper. That was. This is James here. Yeah. Ooh. It was yes. James that I saw. It was. I think. Uh, I think Steve Pepper actually went into the wall as well at the first corner. Oh, did he? Yeah, he's dropped down to twelfth uh, place now. He was running in six at the time. Oh, we got another spinner. Oh, that's Winslade into the wall. These balls bite. They bite very hard. <laughs> they really do. So now we have Maxwell and Murphy here fighting it out with Innis just ahead of them and Innis will be very much hoping that these two will be fighting each other too much that he'll be able to run away but I don't think that's going to happen as we see them both close in on Innis very rapidly and they go that looks Murphy wanted to take them three wide but thought better of it Innis defends well and it keeps that place for now although you get the impression that it's going to be a matter of when they get past not if which Mish is there with the drive we see, oh, that's, yep, and Winslade's back oh <clears throat> that's Winslade spinning in the hairpin and there were a few more cars that got collected in that as well yeah Philip Miles as well the penalty and uh, a repair indeed so this is Maxwell to the outside of Innes Innes to the inside line and Innes has kept that position and it looks like Murphy might have a look on his teammate and indeed Murphy's got straight past him 
So Murphy up to eighth and crucially reverse grid pole position. So here's what happened to Winslade. Oh, just clipped the inside. And then, oh, oh, Parker got through, but. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. That was. Uh, oh dear indeed. Slightly unfortunate was that with uh, Gareth trying <coughs> excuse me, get out of the way of the other cars that were on, on coming. And uh, he put, him, put himself in a roadblock. Oh dear. Indeed. So that's Kelly on Childcraft. Kelly getting position and up to third place. Meanwhile, the top two have bolted. As we see Murphy now making quick work of getting past Innes. I don't think Innes fought that too hard. Murphy, of course, championship leader. So, Charcraft still in the slipstream of Kelly. Third car in shot is Messenger, who's a lap down. Scoring with a meatball flag as well, just popping up there in the top. You see, here's Maxwell trying to get past Innes, trying to follow his teammate through. Doesn't carry enough speed through the long straight. He's catching rapidly through the fountain section. But unfortunately, nowhere to get through. So you see, here's a replay of what happened. Ooh, once again, just that, uh, that yeah. corner... I think there's a, there might be a little bump there to send the car slightly there uh, is indeed, skywards, yeah. and once you've lost control, that's it. So, the fight for reverse grid pole position rages on then. Innes still managing to stay ahead of Maxwell. As we see, there's a car looking very sideways. I'm not sure if that's a car trying to enter the pits. Innes then still ahead of Maxwell. Oh, Innes with the not too good exit. And we'll see if Maxwell can get the position. And there we go. So Innes does have the inside line, but doesn't have the speed. And Maxwell is through and up to 8th place and crucially reverse grid pole position. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Mark and he's there. He's, uh, he was trying to hold on as best he possibly could. And uh, it just... Uh, Stephen Maxwell just saw an opportunity and nipped through. So here's Murphy having dispatched of his teammate and then Innes. He's got Olive now right in front of him. So going down to turn eight, we've got this nice long straight, and yep, Murphy ducks to the inside line. Let's see if he can make it through. He does, and he makes it look easy. And Murphy up to sixth then. So from a pit lane start. He's avoided the carnage, and he's doing an absolutely brilliant job. He is. He's moving through the field quite uh, handsomely, really. <coughs> so Chalcroft still tucked right up behind Kelly. So Kelly got through a good few laps ago. And, yeah, I think it looked as if Kelly was just going to sort of storm away and start catching up the guys at the front, but that's not happened at all. Chowcraft stayed with him. He yeah, actually's doing extremely well. Meanwhile, here are the leaders. Malarin still managing to stay ahead of Etridge. Just a tiny gap between them, though. Just four tenths of a second. So we'll see, we've got about five minutes left. So I think, especially with Murphy down in sixth, I think, yeah, Malarin's really going to be rocketing up in the championship. He's only, what, about 18 points or so behind coming into this round. So, yeah, what a turn of fortunes. Yeah, once again, it could have been very, very different with... Uh if Alex hadn't been uh, 
starting from the back, you see. Um, mm. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how, how things can turn around very, very quickly in Championship. Indeed. Murphy, of course, did set the fastest lap time in qualifying, so he will get a, pole, a point for pole position, even though he didn't start there. You see Mark Brown in fifth. That's a brilliant run from him. He's it all stayed a bit under the radar, to be honest, but it, yeah, he's doing he has, an absolutely yeah. cracking job. And a green car, too. Yes, I do like a green car. <laughs> See, though, he's being hunted down by Murphy. As we see now in 14th, this is Winslade. That is schooling just behind him, so that is not a battle for position. This, however, is Etridge versus Malarin. Lap later, still separated by just three tenths of a second. So just looking at the leaderboard on the left hand side, so we've got this battle for the lead, as we see Ooh, that was close. Greening with a meatball flag. Etridge there very nearly losing it. Winslade also with a meatball flag. So we've got Charlecraft just behind Kelly, Murphy just behind Brown, and Maxwell just behind Olive. But here we are, Charlecraft just behind Kelly. Completely different lines there. Charlecraft will have a much more open line into this corner, but not quite close enough to make a move. He will like have to get a nice, good slipstream. Yeah, it looked like he was opening the corner to try and get a uh, run on uh, uh, Gavin Kelly as he came out the corner there. <clears throat> Indeed, but not quite close enough to do anything with it. We'll see. Oh, a little lock up there for Kelly. He's gone wide. This has opened the door right up for Charlecraft. Charlecraft is through. Kelly will have the inside line for turn one. If he can stay close enough, I don't think he will. Kenneth Olive, meanwhile, has a meatball flag. That promotes Innis up to the reverse grid pole position. It does, yeah. Oh, close that. So, Kelly then did get the inside line, and he's straight through to reclaim third position and the final place on that podium. Meanwhile, Murphy is through on Brown. Right, so, here's a replay of what happened. So this is greening. Yeah. So easy to do that, to lock the rears. Rear comes round. Yeah, lots of drivers get caught out with that, uh, that corner there. So we've got Kelly and all that schooling getting out of the way. But we've got Kelly, Charlecraft, Messenger behind is a lap down, as is schooling and greening. But Kelly defending the inside line. Charlecraft tries the outside, does the switcheroo to cut back to the inside. Still nowhere to go. Can't do anything with it. Kelly wide again into the hairpin. So has that given Charlecraft the position for the second lap in a row? Will Kelly be able to fight back and keep the inside line? It looks like he might be able to, you know? I think he's doing again, yeah? <clears throat> Messenger with a little weave just behind, probably saying, I've got more pace than you, get out of my way. But of course these guys are under no obligation to let lap cars through. So, had seen a poor couple of corners for Charlecraft. Just let that gap open up a little bit to Kelly. So, here's a replay of what happened to Winslade. Coming up to turn six. Just, oh, yeah, lock the brakes and nosedive into the wall. Yeah, it'd be a and from suspension. Yeah, he did the sensible thing and towed back to the pit lane. Another recent here of the replay. Yeah. 
So here's what gave Kenneth Olive his meatball. And oh, that, that was, was a heavy big hit. one. That was a heavy hit. There's Innes going through. I think that was just a bit of Alex Murphy him. as well. That could have been uh, quite a bit it of a was, shot yeah. It's coming around the corner of the a bouncing car off the wall. Indeed, yeah. So we have the white flag out. So Charlecraft has let Greening through. Sorry, he's let Messenger through. He's oh, that gap has opened up. About two seconds now to Kelly in front. So in one lap, oh, Messenger has gone. So that, that's his teammate Greening through. Olive trying to go around the outside of Schooling. Schooling keeps nicely out of the way, tucked to the inside, and Green's got a drive through for too many instant points. Yeah, this track is so just full of incidents. It's yeah. a, a drive through waiting to happen. Meanwhile, this man right here with an absolutely flawless drive to take the win. Tio Malarin back on top of the podium. Yeah, congratulations. A nice win there. And uh, yeah, we're very well put together uh, win from uh, start to finish. Indeed. Absolutely commanding drive. Definitely drive of the champion that was. Definitely. Unfortunately, it wasn't Alex. <laughs> <laughs> So there's Murphy crossing the line in fifth, <laughs> followed by Brown. And then we'll have Maxwell across the line for sixth. And a little bit later, we'll have Innes crossing the line in eighth and taking reverse grid pole position. Yeah, great result there for Matt. Just uh, puts him on the uh, on the front row and uh, in the uh, in the lead for uh, for the second race. And uh, it's always good to have the uh, the front row of this uh, race so you can actually see what you're doing. And winner there for uh, 1500 is Steve Pepper. Great result there for Steve. Well, that was a brilliant drive there for Steve, yeah. So as we see, confirmation of the final results. The confirmation that, yeah, reverse grid for Mark Innes. So yeah, as you say, he'll be able to see what's going on up the front and hopefully be able to stay out of trouble. I think Mark, yeah, he's he's gone through a bit of a dry patch recently and every time he seems to hit the front, he seems to spin or hit the wall completely on his own so hopefully he'll be able to survive more than a few corners yeah fingers crossed he's, he's about time that uh, Mark took a, a nice little win in the USF as well so fingers crossed and uh, you know, good luck for him in the second race indeed the results just gone there through uh, through there for, uh, for the uh, overall championships for heat one and we'll have the uh, the grid and what have you for heat to come up fairly shortly. Now we get to see some nice slow mo shots. Yeah, there's confirmation of Club 1500 standings. So Pepper from Meesters, Miles doing very well after that first lap incident to recover to third. Yeah, it is very well. It's, uh... It's important to get those points for uh, Philip to uh, to make sure that gap doesn't close too much when he's for the championship there. So confirmation of the of the grid here. We've got Mark Innes on on pole position with Steve Maxwell in second. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see um, just how Mark can uh, can pull away, see if he can uh, get a a break from the rest of the pack and uh, and lead it away. So we see Alex Murphy will be pushing from fourth through. Uh, Trying to get onto uh, onto the uh, the win again. Um, for a guy Gavin, Gavin Kelly there P6 and Oli Attridge with uh, seventh and Tom Malarin back on eighth. Don Parker ninth, just off the grid, off the top of the grid there. Um, Pavel Kuzmanek in tenth and Steve Pepper with that win from Club 1500 on eleventh place. Uh, Kenneth Olive in twelfth and Stephen Green in taking thirteenth with his teammate P14 of Michael Messenger. And Rich Meesters um, in uh, another Club 1500 there, <coughs> excuse me, P15. And Keith School in 16th. Philip Miles down in 17th. I'm sure he'll be wanting to work his way through um, to try and take another win in Clubbers. Uh, Gareth Winslade after his incident at P18. Jason Weaver racing around his backyard in 19th. Chris Forrester in 20th. And bringing up the rear, 
is James Petrin uh, 21st. Brilliant. So, as we see the drivers underway now behind the safety car, Innes will be thankful that he's at the front so he doesn't get involved in that collision at the hairpin again. So the safety car comes into the pits and we are racing once again at Long Beach. Innes getting a nice jump there. The two anti Wood Society's cars looks like, looked like they were going to be fighting into turn one. So Innes with a huge lead. He got a brilliant jump on the field there. Mark Brown looking to take things three wide into the first corner. He backs out of it sensibly enough, but that's Maxwell's gone. Maxwell spun and in the wall. Schooling's also had an incident needing a meatball flag, as has Chris Forrester. And yeah, Maxwell there with a meatball flag. Yeah, it's important so Innes now that already with a 1.4 second lead. My apologies, Mark. It's, yeah, it's important for Max to scamper away now and try to build that lead in, you know, in front of uh, Mark Brown and Alex Murphy. Indeed, Murphy had a rather poor corner there. Brown was through. Chalcroft looks like he was going to have a go. Meanwhile, Ke oh, the, oh, four into one. Do not go. Oh. It's a huge pile up there. That looked like Brown Popper. looked like he escaped. No, yeah, I, yeah. yeah so Brown that. made it through. Malarin made it through. Kuzmarek kept, made it through. Yeah, Although some, some very damaged cars there in the first. Mal lap. Malarin made it through, but did clip one of the cars so does have a meatball so looks like he will be coming into the pits and indeed there he comes so it is now with a three second lead from Brown and three seconds from Kuzmarek greening in fourth as we see there so now with a three second gap up to Brown and a three second gap again to Kuzmerk. I'm sure Brown and Innes will probably just be thinking, yeah, all right, let's just take it steady. Let's make it through in one piece. Because I think that crash there has eliminated a lot of the, the big names in this race. It has, yeah. It's important so, like, to mm -hmm. keep it straight now and keep it going you know, forwards and keep out the walls and just concentrate on bringing it to, uh, to the end of the race. Did. We saw in the first race so many people crash, just completely unforced errors. Just either locked the fronts or the rears and went into the wall as we see Stephen Greening now get past Kuzmarek. And Parker's past Kuzmarek as well, so they will now be hunting down the two marks. Two marks now with an enormous lead. Four seconds from Brown to Greening and two and a half seconds from Minister Brown. Well, fastest lap there for uh, Mark, so in, and that's uh, usurped by uh, Mark Brown has uh, just done a, a fastest lap. Indeed. So there's, as we saw on the first lap, unfortunately Maxwell spinning up the rears on exit of T1. But, oh, and talking of spinning up the rears in T1, there goes Greening. So now, after all that, we've got still that two and a half, three second gap from Innes to Brown, but now a five and a half second gap back to Parker. Meanwhile, we've got Winslade in sixth. Hunting down Mises and Kuzmarek. As Mises trying to go around the outside of Kuzmarek. Will he be able to hold? No, not quite. Kuzmarek keeps that position. That's that's a very risky uh, move there. It is indeed. And Mises trying again. This time he's got the inside line. Oh, they make contact. Luckily both cars survived. So Meesters has the position now up to 4th, Kuzmarek down to 5th, Winslade ready to pounce in 6th. So to see a replay of what happened here, this is Forrester in schooling, oh that was... Is he going to collect Weaver as well? I think he is, and that was I think just after the green flag. That was before they even got to turn 1. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me, we didn't actually see what happened there. Um, fully, but I think, uh, like you say, Jason uh, 
just couldn't avoid it and, uh, and knock the front end of his car off. So Murphy now down in 17th. You do feel for him after that pit lane start, working his way back up to, I think, was it fifth in the first round? And oh, he's round again. Yeah. yeah. So his rear tyres will now be hotter than the surface of the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good feeling when you've got no rear tyres. Mm, definitely. So Innes now will just be maintaining that gap, watching the Delta to Brown and, more crucially, Parker, because Parker is a very quick guy. But of course, catching is one thing, passing is another. It's not that easy to pass around here. No, it's quite difficult. You've got to set the, the move up two or three corners before you actually make the move. So, yeah, certainly uh, catching is one thing and passing definitely is another. Yeah, I'd say there's probably, what, maybe two decent passing opportunities, one of which is this corner here, turn one, and the other one is that sort of towards the end of the lap, that turn eight. Yeah, I think the majority of the time you're, you're waiting for a, a driver in front to make a mistake. Exactly. And talking of mistakes, maybe there's a little bit of a mistake for Innes there, because we've seen Brown knock about a second off that gap. So Brown is catching Innes. Let's see, what's this replay for? So this is a replay of the first lap incident. So Brown and Murphy going side by side. Kelly with just so much more speed, but nowhere to go with it. Yeah, that's a lot of cars involved in that. Yeah, I think if the car was on the if your car was on the outside of the uh, corner going there, you just had nowhere to go. And at speed, that corner is mm. completely blind. Um, so there'd be cars coming there that, that would not trying to particularly sneak down the outside, but they yeah, just would have nowhere to go. And unfortunately, there's a wall there, so there's no runoff. And, and next thing, it's uh, the cars in the in the barrier in the wall, and the uh, the suspension's completely broken. Unfortunately. Indeed, yeah. As we see, Malarin set the fastest lap of the race, the 119 dead. As we see, here's a replay of Jason Weaver. What's happened to him? Oh, just lock the rears on entry. Um, I didn't see a sign come up about a meatball flag, so hopefully he's broadly got away with that. As, but having said that, he is in the pits, so I'm guessing he probably didn't. As we see, that was Olive round again. Going for a little spin. Brown is catching Innis, you know. It looks like it, yeah, he's... Uh down to just over 1.1 seconds. It's uh, visible is the uh, the distance now, so yeah, he's, he is catching him. Yeah, so I wonder how much of that is nerves on Innes's part, just sort of trying not to throw away a, a win. How much of it is Brown saying, you know what, I don't care about second, I want the win, and pushing harder and harder to try and get it. Meanwhile, Etridge gets past Pepper for 14th place. Yeah, I think Steve Pepper there realised that uh, Ollie Etridge was behind him and uh, he wasn't fighting for that, that place for uh, for too hard. It's, uh, there's obviously a speed difference between uh, Steve and, and Oliver there. Mm, indeed. Well, I think uh, Mark Brown here will be uh, waiting for the... Uh, um, the, the, the front straight to uh, maybe uh, take advantage of the uh, camel's toe as, uh, as he goes down there in the first <laughs> corner. Indeed. And having said that, the gap to Parker is increasing. So these two are starting to drop Parker a little bit. They are. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to, uh, you know, to, to constant, constantly uh, lap at, uh, at speed. But it's obviously now 5.2 5 seconds in front of Don Parker and... Uh, it is going to be uh, difficult for Dom to uh, to bridge that gap. 
Indeed, only five minutes left in this race, which of course to, to these two will probably feel like an absolute eternity. Yeah, now it's uh, Mark Brown's under the uh, under the second gap now, so he's uh, he'll be feeling the effects of that uh, that nice little uh, toe down the, uh, the, the the front straight. Oh, that was Wednesday with another meatball flag. That's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, he's in sixth at the moment, just a few tenths behind Greening. So, yeah, that's a real shame. As we see, is this going to be a replay of what happened? Yes, it is. There is Winslade. Oh, we just hit uh, the, uh, the curbing very hard there. Uh, yeah, I've just got the rear end out. And just tap the wall. There's no giving sure the ball at all. No. I'm sure he'll be sat there thinking that there's no way that was a meatball. <laughs> I'm sure to him it'll feel like he barely grazed it, but unfortunately... Yeah, that's going to, of course, suspension damage. So, as we count down, we've got three and a half minutes left of this race. So, maybe two or three more laps. Innes is starting to pull out now, he's, um, he's over a second again, so he'll be trying to eke out that, uh, that time as much as he possibly can, so uh, he's, uh, he's not assisting Mark in, in trying to take it, uh, his place away from him. Indeed, and meanwhile Parker has closed that gap massively, so maybe a little mistake there for Brown. Well, Rich Meese is up into fourth place as well. Indeed, he's having a brilliant race, sort of being quietly under the radar. Yeah, I think sometimes these but, yeah, races are, are this important like that, especially in a place like this where it's it's important to be consistent um, and, and keep out of the walls. Indeed. So as you see, Etridge now in 14 not pulling away hugely from Steve Pepper, so Steve's putting in a decent run there. Obviously after being involved in that first lap incident. Meanwhile Brown starting to close back in on Innes. He's caught a couple of tenths this lap. I think that must have been your teeth. Oh, that's <laughs> greening. That's greening in the wall. He looks like... I'm not sure if he's got damage. Brown, though, getting ever closer to Innes. Yeah, he's closing right in at the moment. It's important to get a, a good run off that uh, final corner and onto the straight. And with only one minute uh, 30 seconds remaining, this could possibly be the, uh, the make or break for uh, Mark here as he's uh, going down the start finish straight. Indeed, I'm sure he'll have his eyes on the clock, counting down the laps. Of course, we've got Alex Murphy not too far behind, and he is obviously lapping very quickly compared to these two at the front, so I wonder if Murphy's going to get involved. Murphy, of course, has every right to unlap himself. So the these guys did not get white flag, so it will be this lap and then one more lap. So Innes has just a lap and a half to hold on to. We see Murphy now in the slipstream of Brown. Will Murphy go for the overtake to unlap himself? He does. He goes to the inside. And 
looks like he's got that move done, so Innes will be breathing a sigh of relief that he's now got a car in between him and his main rival for this race victory. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame, really, because uh, obviously I don't think uh, Alex was uh, fighting uh, with a car that was slightly behind him, or was next on the road, and he's uh, he's obviously taken the eye of uh, of Mark Brown as he's come through on that last corner, uh, and it's and it's maybe robbed us of a little bit of a, uh, a a really good finish. A bit of a shame, really. Indeed, that is a bit of a shame, but we do get to see Parker chasing down Brown now and see if Parker can move up one step on the podium. As we see Messenger all over the back of Winslade. Messenger getting a little bit out of shape through the hairpin. Meanwhile, you can see Innes is starting to defend quite heavily from Murphy. He does not want to let Murphy through. No, he probably he best wants that car. Yeah, but I think he wants that car in between himself and Brown. Yeah, I can see the point with of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because with Murphy there, Brown can't be there. Either way, he's managed to hold off Murphy and Brown for long enough. There's the chequered flag. Fantastic win there. Mark Innes gets the race win. Superb. Brilliant result there for Mark. Well done. And, uh, yeah, it, it's overdue, certainly. He's, uh, he's had a... A bit of an up and down season with the different results, and there we see Rich Meester taking the win for Club 1500. Brilliant job by both the Cool Camel drivers there. That's it. They'll be celebrating with Cool Camel Guinness 0, .0. <laughs> <laughs> They will indeed. So here we see the uh, the final results there for Rafa's feature race. Mark Guinness on there with a with a nice, lovely win there for Cool Camel Gold, followed by Mark Brown. And uh, Don Parker taking third place in the last uh, podium. Rich Meester's winning for uh, Cole Camel Guinness with uh, Club 1500. And then obviously the, uh, the, the the rest of the field coming through. What a fantastic race. Obviously full of incidents and uh, packed with uh, fantastic racing. And yeah, more can be said. Yeah, I think... Innes will have a huge grin on his face after that. <laughs> definitely. <I> think, <laughs> definitely a long overdue race victory. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll take a couple of weeks for, the, for him to come down off the top there. <laughs> oh, you know, I think it'll take more than a couple of weeks. He'll still be, still be stood there spraying champagne in about a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some lovely slow I think you could well be right. There. Yeah. And that's the, uh, the, the as we see the, confirmation. That's it. My apologies, Mark. Uh, Sorry, Steve. You gone? <laughs> final, final leg uh, there for uh, the uh, Club 1500 with Rich Meesters, Philip Miles, Steve Pepper on the put on the podium with Jason Weaver and then James Pepper bringing up fifth place. Well, I think we've uh, we've got something quite special coming up after the uh, championship standing. So please stay tuned for that. That'd be a nice little uh, montage coming up. Indeed. Now we see Tom Malarin taking top spot at the moment from Alex Murphy, 354, plays 329. So it's uh, once again Tom Malarin sneaking up there to take the, the, the first place. Indeed, what a what a season of two halves. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, <coughs> we were basically writing him off for this championship, what, three, four races in? Yeah. And now, look at him now. Nobody can write Tom Alarin off in a, in a championship. He comes he comes strong at some stage. Um, so it's just about <laughs> trying to keep ahead as, as long as you possibly can. Yeah. Yeah, as we come to a close in this championship, it's got one race left. So then, yeah, we will have some drop scores to take into account, but yeah, it looks like it's going to be one of those two, Murphy versus Malarin for the title. Yeah, very much so.
The championship standings there for the Club 1500 with Philip Miles now only uh, 23 points in front of uh, Rich Meesters uh, and Steve Pepper in third place there. And I think that's uh, uh, virtually done and dusted for the top three with James Pepper chasing hard 374 points and Steve Angie 304. And there we go. Confirmation that the Anti Wizard Society are well out in front. And I think that is all but confirmed. Wizards Black Sapphire in second, taking the spot from Minardi Simsport. Stupid Aguri, not too far behind, though. No, it's very close there. Yeah, Cool Camel Gold jumping up ahead of their sister team, Silver. So here we are. We'll leave you with this um, uh, this tribute to Eric. Thank you very much. It'd be a uh, perfect send-off. Yeah, I think as we said earlier in the show, Eric struggling with his shoulder. And I think, yeah, this just goes to show just how much of a popular guy he is. As we see all of the different liveries with a tribute to Eric. And yeah, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say, get well soon, Eric. We love racing with you. We miss you. And we hope to see you back on track soon. And yeah, thank you for racing with us. Yeah, definitely. And that goes for everybody at uh, Cool Camel. Um, it's been fantastic. And we hope to see you back on track very, very soon. Absolutely 100% on that one. Salute, Eric. Definitely powered by PUC. <laughs> the anti wizard's there. Uh, not Eric. He's a great guy. Fantastic. That he is. Yeah. Keep it on the black stuff. Super Eric. Super Eric indeed. Everybody wearing this with pride. It's been fantastic. 100%. There we go, Eric. Hope you mend up quickly and yeah hope we see you back on the grid soon meanwhile next time out we've got the season finale at charlotte motor speedway which will be deciding both the overall championship and the club 1500 championship so make sure you tune into that there are the links to our socials they're also in the description so come and say hi if you want to race with us or if you don't want to race with us come and say hi anyway we won't bite meanwhile thank you very much for watching I've been Mark, and joining me has been Steve. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Mark. And we'll hope to see you uh, in the next one. Everybody take care, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye for now. Bye.